What's the worst business idea you've seen someone try to execute? Can't believe no one mentioned that guy who went on Shark Tank to pitch a Bluetooth earpiece that you got surgically implanted in your ear canal that you charged by sticking a needle in your ear while you slept. The Ionic Ear. I was almost sold by his enthusiasm. I can only imagine the FDA approval process on something like that. Somebody thought it would be a good idea to open a dance club in my northern Canadian city with a dress code. 90% of the population is tradesmen and miners who only own Carhartts and Hivis. Needless to say, it shut down within 6 months. Clearly they needed to hire Kevin Bacon to come out and promote it. In about 2005 my friend's dad tried to start an arcade in a small town, just outside walking distance from a school using beat up second hand machines. To get there from the school you'd have to walk by an established, larger arcade that also sold food. It all sounded fine and dandy until you mentioned the larger arcade with food. There was a bar that opened up in my city and their entrance was hidden. They did a news story and they refused to tell the paper where it was actually located. To everyone's complete surprise, they only stayed open for a couple of weeks. The last hidden bar I went to had someone standing outside the hidden entrance and if you looked confused enough, they'd walk up to you and go you looking for the hidden bar and open the door for you. The venue at least had signs and they are listed on the web page. We have a small time theme park in my state called Evermore and they thought it would be a good idea to try and sue Taylor Swift over her album of the same name. They probably thought it would be a great publicity stunt where they'd get into national papers and Swift would just give them a couple grand to go away. Father-in-law drove 18 hours down to Florida to catch shrimp. Filled his tiny car with tons of the shrimp and drove back. It took days to vacuum seal the shrimp that hadn't gone bad only to sell a few bags to some friends. The car smelled like seafood for years. Missed one key step. Preserving the catch. Reminds me of a friend that tried to grow weed in the woods. Ended up working like a charm. He has so much weed he could barely pick it all. Filled multiple garbage bags with it. Loaded the bags into his car. Then well he didn't research properly and just let it sit. HR tried to smoke some wet weed, but as you can guess, it wasn't burning. A few days later it was covered in hot mold and the car smelled like a planet sized skunk exploded in there. I can see Kramer doing this. Actually I can see him doing everything in this thread. Context. I live in Las Vegas. When I was in my 20s, I was hired by a man who wanted to build my space for strippers. His goal was for the men on the site to pay him to follow their favorite strippers and know what clubs they were dancing at and when. He shut the project down, after months of paying me, when he found out that no stripper would sign up for it. Sign up to get stalked. One of my friends in Vegas still gets calls from guys asking for the stripper escort that used to have their number. I've known them for almost 10 years and they had been getting them for years before we met. I don't blame them one bit for wanting no part of that. Someone in my neighborhood opened an artisan hot dog restaurant called Everyone's Frank about a decade ago. My dad and I went in once at about 6pm on a Saturday. We were the only customers. So the owner, who was working the register, chatted us up. He talked about his plans to expand the business to about 15 locations, which was completely delusional. He also talked about how much he spent on the interior redesign, which was pointlessly fancy. The hot dogs cost $9 and tasted terrible. We never went back, and the place was bankrupt within 6 months. My dad always said they'd gone frankrupt. That's a great name though, and everyone's name tag could just say Frank. Specialty chocolate shop. It only sold the exact same standard candy bars as any supermarket, but with less of a range, and at 4 times the price. I asked the manager if he had lint chocolate balls, upmarket but well known product. And he said what others? Also, there was a supermarket two doors down. We had a woman in town who started this bookstore candy store combo. It was just weird and I'm not sure what it was trying to be. It was a bunch of kids books and then a bunch of handmade. Weird chocolates and not even stuff that would be appealing to kids stuff like green tea chocolate, chili pepper chocolate, super dark chocolate, etc. There were tables to eat the chocolates but then you couldn't look at the books because your hands would be dirty. The whole thing was just bizarre. Strangely, it stayed open for a year. In fairness, the lady who owned it was truly a sweetheart. People loved her. She was an older, super kind, super chatty lady. But the business was, well, 
Not sustainable. In my country there was a guy who used to sell wood, the problem was he did not have any of it, so he would ask for payment and then not give the product afterwards, hoping that procrastination and time will make the problem go away. He did 4 years in jail, haha <laughs> that's just stealing, yeah, well he thought he was very smart, and in addition, he would make web lectures on marketing and how to be a successful businessman. He soon became a meme in the whole country. A lady opened a southern soul food buffet in my city, it was incredible, amazing food. On some days, it was a buffet with a rotating menu depending on the day of the week, and those days were not equal. So what happened was people would go on an off day, be unimpressed, not come back, or come on one of the better days, love it, come back on an off day, then never come back. I was so disappointed, I would donate towards reopening that restaurant but with only the optimal menu. Every day, that woman has serious culinary talent. This actually happened to my mom. She got a job cooking for this local Brazilian buffet place and people started complimenting the food on the day she cooked. Before long her days were always busier than the others as her food was delicious. Eventually the owner's wife or GF got one of her friends to come in and cook as well and she was nowhere near as good as my mom. She also charged less so the owner eventually gave my mom less and less of the cooking load and she eventually quit. The change was noticeable almost immediately. People would ask about the food and what had changed. It was always funny to see the owner have to squirm and give some excuse when the real reason was he was a cheap A. Nowadays whenever I stop by their full lunch buffet the food is never amazing and they never have a dining room as full as they used to. I have a friend whose family has gotten involved in multiple pyramid schemes. And every single time they get into a new pyramid scheme, they claim it's not a pyramid scheme. No, no, no you don't get it. I am the boss. Once I produce 5 clients for my mentor, then I keep all my new clients and they have to get me 5 new clients each. It's people helping people. Well of course it is. It's people helping people to build a shtai pyramid of lies and deceit. Ugh I hate people like this. I had a guy in my video game chat group who would not stop promoting his product even after I warned him multiple times. I had to kick him from the group and he private messaged me afterwards explaining how it wasn't a pyramid scheme and it wasn't predatory and how my job as a pharmacy tech was definitely more like a pyramid scheme than his wax melting business. When I was in high school, one of my friends wanted to start a little coffee shop hot chocolate stand with a cuddle corner and free hugs for anyone who wants them. She offered jobs to our other friend's ex. The idea was that this little business would be operated and staffed by high schoolers. She failed to see the issue with having 16 year old girls required give free hugs to customers or having to staff the cuddle corner. It could be very successful, but to all the wrong people. I love escorting people. I put an ad out for an escort service and got a lot of responses. Mostly creeps. Made a few friends. Dwight Scroot. Replace 16 year old girls with 10 cats and it's a viable business. In fact, there's one a half mile from me. Drink some coffee, pet a kitty, oh boy, that would make your friend super wealthy for a few minutes before the cops come from all angles to arrest all of the customers. Holy sh, remember the oxygen bath ad a few years back, who's enjoying sitting on that near zero value asset today, or the ice bar, where it is minus 25c all the time, my mate got drunk there and stole one of their glasses, stashed it in his gf's purse, idiot, they are made of ice and melted. GF was pissed, you still see them in Vegas and once in a while you see people using them. Ultimate tourist trap. Guy I know got a small inheritance, enough for a deposit on a unit or small house. Nope, seahorse farm. Turns out seahorses are difficult to breed. What would you even use seahorses for? Pets? Those weird dried up seahorses in tacky gift shops? They are super popular as pets for saltwater reef aquariums. Not a bad idea if you have the know-how on how to breed them, especially since most are wild caught. So there's a huge demand for captive bred animals. Would say it's more of a bad execution than idea. One time many years ago my friend and I were in line behind a woman who had a shirt emblazoned with the word taint. He inquired about it and it turned out it was her clothing company. She explained that she loved the word taint like, taint this, taint that. He explained the popular meaning of the word to her and her face dropped. I was mortified but he probably did the right thing. 
I mean how did she manage to get to the point where her company had logo emblazoned shirts and not one person had ever mentioned that the popular meaning of her company's name was essentially the Balter Butthole Superhighway? I mean even the traditional meaning of the word means that something is contaminated. One a-hole tried to exploit people's fears after the 9-stroke 11 attacks by marketing parachutes to businesses with offices in skyscrapers. There was nothing special about them, they were normal parachutes. He had a TV interview where he tried promoting how easy it was going to be to get into the harnesses. However, his assistant couldn't get into the harness. He chastised her for it on television. Even after he tried to help her, they couldn't get the harness to fit. Maybe test the merchandise before pitching it. For that concept to have a chance of actually working from the height of most office buildings you'd probably need a ballistic chute launched upwards. So it's open immediately as you begin to fall. Without that I wonder if giant zorb balls wouldn't be a better, or at least equally stupid, idea. Office ejector seats. So my friend had an idea that she thought was brilliant. It was to take all tap water and bottle it in parks and sell it. And then use that money to pay for homeless necessities. Really good intentioned, and a kind gesture. However in my country there are free fountains everywhere for drinking. So she spoke to our town's mayor and suggested that all of our water gets put into water bottles and then we sell them beside the water fountains. The mayor destroyed it really quickly with how it would create unnecessary waste. The amount of money you have to spend on wages to have people standing near fountains 24 stroke 7. What if people have reusable water bottles? And why doesn't she find a way to collect money for existing homeless programs? Friend got pissed. Still thinks her idea is brilliant. Solution in search of a problem at its finest. One of the younger dudes in my karate class was going to start a handyman business. 24H. Anything needing to be done. Anywhere in our district. Sounds good. You gonna get a loan and buy a used truck and get some tools? And you never have talk time on your phone. So will you get a landline? 2006. So not super outlandish. No. I'll go on my bicycle. And I'll just use the tools they have. And they can email me when they need service. Right because when I have water spraying out of my geyser through the ceiling at 3am I'm going to email a dude on a bicycle to come fix it using all the tools and the ladder I don't own. Subject. Fire dear sir madam. I am writing to inform you of a fire that has broken out. On a bike? Okay. Sure. Not having your own tools and showing up on a bike? He's just a refined dude riding a bike. Rented dude. There was a guy in my town that opened a business that was the equivalent of a brick and mortar version of Craigslist or newspaper classified ads. It was a unit in a strip mall with bulletin boards. You paid to put an ad up and other people came to look at the ads with a small picture. This was after Craigslist existed. Not some pre-internet thing. There was no actual merchandise in the store. Just crappy pictures of stuff with the contact info. It wasn't even a high foot traffic location. You had to maneuver through a busy intersection. Park and go inside to look at a bulletin board. It went under and he tried to blame the landlord because he couldn't get a sign permit for the end of the building even though he had two other signs. This one is straight up insanity. Sounds like that lady's weirdy based or from the 40 year old virgin. Her method is actually very common on eBay. There are companies making many millions per year doing consignment sales for rich people, although they don't usually run it out of a shop like her. Monthly sex toy subscription. You would get a different sex toy each month. Which is an okay idea I guess. There's one of those for everything nowadays. But the only problem this guy had is that he wanted the customers to eventually return the toy so he could pass it on to the next customer. He actually got in talks with an owner of a local sex shop to help him start. But the enthusiasm flattened out quite quickly. Remove the return part of it and you have kinky loot box. With the right marketing I think you could make decent cash. Assuming you had adult industry connections to sex toy manufacturers and could get your ads on Pornhub. Probably big dollar signs. Returning used dildos though. Not a profitable idea. Who the f would want to use a community dildo? Netflix. Someone in Edmonton, Canada opened a dairy store. Milk and cheese and placed it across the street from a large grocery store. He hoped that shoppers would buy everything they needed at the grocery store except their milk and cheese, which the grocery store had ample supply of, and make another trip to their store for milk and cheese. It didn't last. I could see a specialist cheese shop working, 
some wear that stocked things you can't buy in the supermarket, and would do party platters and cheesecakes for weddings with whole wheels. But just a regular dairy shop? Nah. Convenience is king when you're doing your regular shop. You'd only use it if you only needed a pint of milk and didn't need anything else at all. I volunteered at the start of COVID for a charity shop. They sold clothes. We got a lot of great merch in. But we had limited space. I suggested that we cycle the stock by seasons. As in, summer clothes got put out straight away. But sellable winter clothes got put upstairs to be sold in winter. The manager did not like this idea, except that 90% of the stock was winter wear. That spark joy thing really hit home. So our entire shop was filled with woolly sweaters and Ugg boots in May. Suffice to say, they went out of business. A loud mouth drunk, supposedly an ex-NFL player from way back, opened a fancy pizza place across the street from the small town's old favorite normal pizza place. It was a pretty obvious attempt to put the old place out of business and corner the lucrative small town pizza market. The owner of the new place would get hammered and walk around to random tables to schmooze. He would loudly hit on the ladies in front of their dates. It had really good pizza, but it was horribly overpriced and the portions were tiny. It went out of business pretty quickly. Sounds like any Gordon Ramsay related nightmare show. Why is every pizza a pizza for two? Don't worry, the owner will hit on you soon. Does anyone have that reddit relationship advice thread? The one where the girlfriend is questioning her boyfriend's intelligence after his great business idea. Soup delivered to people's houses via pipes. For extra you can get the soup delivered directly to your mouth. I give you, soup tubes. I wonder if we could get an update on soup tubes. That was hilarious. One soup tube please. Dude bought 150k fidget spinners at the height of the craze. It took months to ship out from China and by the time all his arrived, the mania had ended and the retail price was already near his original wholesale price. Effin guy still has fidget spinners today, I guess he may eventually do okay on it, but goddamn. I get trying to capitalize on a popular trend, but 150k is ridiculous. Even when it was at its peak everybody pretty much knew it wouldn't last. It literally appealed to people with short attention spans. My dad has been in hundreds of pyramid schemes. When I was a kid he would always describe how the pyramid worked and I would help him with his meetings. Took me a long time to figure out his get rich plans were really schemes. He still does them. Never been rich off them though. One was Excel. A super cancer beating fruit juice. You give me $5,000. Then you get 5 people to give you $5,000 then they get their own people to give $5,000. Tanning salon in Bangkok, Thailand. Thais idealize snowy white skin and go to huge lengths to avoid the sun on their skin. They've never gotten used to seeing western women baking in bikinis on beaches. That crazy expensive juicer from several years ago that used proprietary juice packets. You could just poke a hole in the packet and hand squeeze the juice for free to save a few hundred dollars. Maybe I'm stupid but I thought the point of a juicer was to take whole ingredients and make juice out of them. It is, hence why this was a spectacular failure. A crazy over-engineered device to squeeze regular juice from packets. I'm dumbfounded by whoever thought it was a good idea. That device is how I got introduced to the AV YouTube channel. He took one apart and was all struck at the over-engineering in the device. I had a client apply for a $3 million SBA loan to buy a treehouse building franchise. I asked him why he wouldn't just build the tree houses and save the $3 million. He said he'd never considered that, why the hell spend the next 10 years slowly losing all of your own money doing something you love, when you can spend the next 5-10 years slowly losing someone else's money whilst doing something you love. I had a customer once that wanted to build an auction website that would put eBay out of business. His hook was he wanted to sell very niche expensive items. To kick the whole thing off he was going to sell Monica Lewinsky's just stained dress. Out of the all the polite questions that emerged from the initial meeting I finally got around to asking how he ended up with the infamous dress. Oh I don't own that. I was just going to take the final auction bids and offer that to Monica for the dress I see. And your budget for building said empire? Would $1,500 bucks get me started? I love when people think of an idea for an app or website and completely underestimate the startup cost. I want to make an app for Android, iOS, and a website. Can you code in any of those three languages? 
No. Do you have about a million dollars laying around to pay a team of people to develop and market that? Boob therapy. Getting women to become breast therapists to come put a boob on your face whenever you feel bad for therapy and get insurance to cover it. It didn't work. I'd like to subscribe to your therapeutic services. Here is my credit card. Charge me any amount you think is appropriate. $8,008. I once saw someone pitch a restaurant massage combo where you could eat your meal while receiving massage therapy. The laying on a table kind. As a massage therapist. That's an incredibly stupid idea. Unless you like lying face down in a plate of food. Don't judge how I live. Specialized cum socks. No I'm not joking. Those are called condoms. In my college town there was a cereal restaurant. Why make a bowl of cereal at home when you can pay $5 for someone else to do it? Not surprisingly, it closed soon after opening. You say that. But there are multiple such cafes in London that do pretty well. They seem to advertise rare raw country specific cereals. So maybe you can survive in a multi-ethnic city by selling foreign people their childhood when they are feeling homesick? There was a bar that opened in the capital of my country that wouldn't charge you for the drinks, but for the time spent there. Obviously everyone's goal was to drink as much as possible in the least possible amount of time. So they had to shut down soon. Almost certain that's a successful thing in Japan. Can't remember where I saw it. Yeah it's really popular there. I spent many a night paying like $30 for 3 hours of all I could eat and drink. But there's also an expectation of not taking advantage and being respectful. Quibby. That and something I saw on Shark Tank. These buttons you put on your nightstand so you can tell your spouse you're in the mood for sex without risking rejection. Like, just talk to the person you married maybe? Other Shark Tank gems. Stuffed elephant in a display case that you bring out when you need to talk about something difficult. Post-it note holder for your computer monitor. Stand where people had to operate a bicycle powered blender to get a smoothie. Special stickers to put over your laptop camera. The sharks were interested until the pitch man said he was retailing them for a ridiculous price. I have a free sticker from the bank over my laptop camera. It's a stegosaurus. If we're doing shark tank ideas there was some dude that said he could turn water into gold. There was a Russian potato restaurant below my previous apartment. I ate there a couple of times. But their menu changed so often I never had a favorite potato. Also had potato lasagna, potato cheesecake and potato drinks. It wasn't successful. 89% of people who own operate restaurants should never have opened them in the first place. The thing with restaurants is that they sell the pleasant experience along with the food and that maximum profitability comes from immersing the customer in that pleasant experience and isolating them from the true nuts and bolts of what is actually going on behind the scenes. So, people who have never worked in restaurants think it must be easy to do because their only experience with restaurants has been the easy experience of the customer, and nothing could be further from the truth. Running a successful restaurant is hard. Profit margins are often razor thin and it requires bringing together and juggling many disparate elements that can go pear shaped in a nanosecond. Plus, if you don't sell your stock in time it goes bad and vanishes, unless you own a piece of frozen to microwave place. Imagine owning a hardware store and not selling all 20 hammers in 3 days and then throwing out 7 of them. Bye bye money. I worked in restaurants for 15 years and would never get in the business as an owner. My mother with her wonderful idea of being a baby masseurs. Yes, massages for babies was her idea. Except in order to be allowed to touch random children, you need to be a certified professional. Preferably operating in a clinic for obvious reasons. My mother has zero certificates, zero diplomas, doesn't take any care of herself at all. Has poor hygiene and lived in a sketchy neighborhood. Now imagine an obese woman with greasy hair and worn out clothes saying she wants to give a massage to your baby. Not to mention the fact there's already children's doctors and other professional who have training and know what they're doing. Unlike her, who watched two videos on YouTube and decided she was a professional. Yes mom, great idea. I really can't understand how that business idea of yours didn't take off immediately. I saw something where these men were trying to sell gloves to wear for girls when changing pads or tampons so we don't get blood on our hands. What do these guys think we've been doing our whole life? Besides we wash our hands. And we don't need gloves to wipe after using the bathroom. Very stupid idea.